The time has almost come. I am almost ready to retire my Optiplex SX280 turned Optiplex 760 ultra small form factor computer in lieu of my uh, Pogo plug, which is now running both my IRC server and my web with uh, PHP. And it doesn't do too bad a job. Uh, with PHP, it's kind of slow, but st still kind of usable. I'm going to look in and see if uh, I can get some help in slimming down the PHP packages by compiling it without uh, some of the stuff that I'm never going to use. And it should just be right as rain. The last time that I was able to get something like that done, it was on my 486 laptop that I was using as a Debian box for a long time. And I ended up getting the help of one of my uh, buddies on IRC to give me a hand with uh, compiling PHP 5, I think it was, 5.2 or 5 point something or other. And we ended up getting it down to a few seconds of being able to uh, get and parse linfo out uh, and spit a page back out to the web browser. Well, it went down to like a second. It's pretty much instant on this. But for something like this or a 486, it's a lot of work, it turns out. So, it's almost time, but there is one thing that I'm going to miss when I move away from this guy. You know what that is? It's the PC speaker. There's a little tiny buzzer inside that makes beeps and stuff when it gets angry at you. And there's a very specific reason as to why I'm going to miss it. Someone wrote a Python script using some code from someplace else, which is properly credited in the code, to play MIDI files through the PC speaker as a one voice, uh, pretty much uh, like, like you would get out of a PC speaker on a DOS machine. I thought, hey, this is pretty cool. Let's see what it can do. It doesn't, it also doesn't do half bad. It needs some work because it really hasn't been touched in five years. But the code is solid and it puts out pretty good sound. Now, uh, I'm going to do a demonstration here of exactly what's happening. You're probably going to want to turn your speaker down, your, your speakers or headphones, especially you headphone users, because I know you exist. I'm one myself. And I'm going to play this. At some points in this particular MIDI file that I'm playing, it's going to sound like a phone is going off. No, it's not a phone. It's actually part of the MIDI file itself. The MIDI file I'm going to be playing is the title sequence to uh, Curse of Monkey, or, yeah, Monkey Island 2. Monkey Island 1, it works, but it has some quirks to it. I've tried to fix that in uh, editing the MIDI file a little bit to remove a couple of the voices that it requires, or it, it's at least trying to parse through uh, and turning it into a one voice, but it really doesn't do it any justice. It's just always going to be shit until someone decides to come along and take the code and fork it and pretty much make it happy and nice and stuff. But I doubt that's ever going to happen because this PC speaker is slowly becoming deprecated in a lieu of onboard sound and having the sound go through as a soft beep. So, I'm going to do a test here. You can see I have 253 days uptime on this box, so it's going to be really sad when it finally decides to, uh, when I finally decide to shut it down. And I'm running a D shell shocked bash. And let's go. Okay, so here we go. Headphone users, you're going to want to turn your uh, volume down just a little bit. And those on speakers, it's not a phone. It's the song.
and then it drops back to shell. So that's the end of this here. Just wanted to show that. I might have a remedy though. Depends on if it works or not. See my Beagle Bone Black here, which now has acquired a RAM sync on the uh, on the uh, DDR3 for no real good reason. Actually, yeah, the heat sink doesn't go past that, so that's actually pretty good. Uh, so these two heat sinks are lower than the clearance of these uh, shield connectors here, which is very good. Sorry, GPIO and what have you shield connectors to connect a shield. And that's exactly what I intend to do, is, is connect a shield. Um, you can find this on eBay for $16. And here it is. It is a miscellaneous wave share, uh, just, they call it a misc cape. And what it has is it has a buzzer there at uh, item number 6. And at number 12, it has real-time clock as well, which is an added bonus. Uh, that's actually something that I was looking for because the BeagleBone does not have an onboard on uh, onboard clock, a uh, real-time clock. So once I get the uh, well, get the money together to and remember to actually buy this, and then wait for it to ship out of well, China, wherever it is in Hong Kong or something, I will get this, and it will be great. And hopefully it lives up to my expectations for it, which is having the, uh, the buzzer working as a PC speaker and also real-time clock so I don't have to grab the latest, uh, well, it's going to do that anyway, but at least it'll keep its real-time clock while it's off, which is probably going to be never, but you never know. In the case of it, uh, there being a power outage or something, I don't want it to like lose time and then at the beginning of the boot it's gonna be like ooh it's 1970 wow man yeah let's not let's not have that happen this this is actually gonna be really cool i hope there's also a little uh push button switch there and i'm probably never going to use that maybe maybe not i have plans although not really ever not really gonna happen I'm going to um, hook up an LCD to the BeagleBone at some point. I'm not exactly sure when that's going to be, but I want to do it so that I can push a button and it'll turn on and display HTOP for a little bit so I can just take check out the load averages and the uptime and all that sort of stuff. You know, usual stuff that, that you want to see and have it show you because you're used to things like that. And that's going to be pretty cool. Alright, so that's the end of this video. That's all I wanted to really show. Uh, I'm in preparations with some... Uh, I'm moving some wires around and moving some things around because once I remove the Optiplex 760 from the mix, this is all going to change and placements of all of this stuff here is going to change. And before that, I'm going to be putting... Uh, well, I'm going to be putting the new Home Plug AV warts in place so that I can actually get some decent throughput at my internet connection level, hopefully, over the power line down to the basement so that I don't have to use Wi-Fi and it's open for other people and I'm not lagging all over the place. So yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to show. Uh, if anybody has any questions about anything that's really happening here, which I don't think there really is any questions, it's on top of an entertainment center cabinet in the other room, away from the living room, so uh, it's pretty dusty up here, too, because I really don't ever touch anything. Oh, hey, look! What do we have here? Got a couple of CPUs here that I forgot that I had up here. This one was actually sitting up in my bedroom for a little while. This one's a, uh, let's see, AM5X86 P75, so it's a 13380Z, so that runs at 133 megahertz, and it's supposed to be a 586 chip or something along those lines, but it's really not. It's just another 486, I think. I haven't really looked up the CPU world info for this chip in a long time, so I don't know if it includes a uh, Pentium instruction set or not. It probably doesn't, but it's it's a bit on the uh, battered, tattered side. It's got some really old uh, dried on crufty Arctic Silver 5 on the top because at that point I had a heatsink clip to it and there was no fan. So, what better way to alleviate some heat than give it some proper thermal compound? Uh, I had this in my compact 
Serial 433 for a while, and it really didn't uh, do so well. I ended up putting the 486DX4100 back in because of obvious reasons. And then this over here, this is supposedly... This is supposedly... I don't know what this is. This is supposedly another 486 chip of some kind. Again, I have no idea. Are these two the same? Yeah, they're the same size. Actually, they're probably the same chip, and this one just has a heatsink on it already, like uh, glued to it or something. And they both have uh, the uh, voltage uh, regulator uh, boards. I actually picked up which one of these was it. It was the one on this. This one I actually I actually picked up on the Vintage Computer Forums uh, marketplace back in '09 from someone. And if you are watching this video by happenstance, which I also heavily doubt will ever happen, thank you very much for this wonderful, wonderful invention these were back in the day. And I will keep it until I die, pretty much. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much the end of it. I've also got my Raz Pi here, which I'm probably never going to do anything with. This is still up for grabs if anybody wants it. I'm probably going to include the SD card too if you want to. It's only a junky CNDisk 8 gig class 4, but it works. I'll probably never use that. And it's already heat synced up, so hey, there's that. Again, this, that's a Model 1. Uh, well, yeah, it's a version 1 Model B. Uh, definitely the half gig version. I'm just never going to use it ever. I have no use for it. Now that I have the Beagle Bone. And this, again, it's only been powered up a few times, and it's pretty much otherwise stock. I think I I think I overclocked it to 900 megahertz. That's why I had the heatsink on it, if memory serves. But memory is kind of foggy after a year of not touching it and really not playing with it. So uh, what I'll probably do is I'll put a fresh uh, uh, Raspbian install on it. Probably Jesse, if it's out by the time that someone decides to buy it off of me or I end up just uh, giving it off to somebody. So let me know. If you want that or something, you're in uh, some place in New Jersey and you want to like meet up to get it or something. Hey, it's all yours. Uh, hey, uh, I'm again. I'm never gonna use it. It's a nice little tiny Linux machine. It's great to start out if you want to get something that has some GPIO pins and stuff. And of course, it has the uh, the one port that's used for webcam and the one display adapter that's never used ever which also exists on the model, uh, on the version 2. So, <laughs> uh, hey, let me know. It's, uh, I'm, I'm definitely gonna let it go for, like, again, like, 20 bucks, yours. Done. Uh, so, that's pretty much the end of this video. Again, you have any comments about anything here? Hey, I want to hear it. There's comments down below, and there's also a video description where I may be including links to some of this stuff that I've just shown as far as the miscellaneous cape for the BeagleBone Black. And of course, I'm going to link the midibeeper.py source, which I also believe is on GitHub. So I might be linking it there, or I might just link to the page where I got mine initially. All right, that's the end of this. And hopefully you'll see me next time.